I'm not fully awake right now, but we're going to do this to the best of my ability, okay? Make it nice and easy on my life. So open up your terminal. Make sure that you have Yay installed. This is very important. I mean, if you're looking to use Hyperlint, you're obviously going to have Yay. This is for Arch Linux only uh, because it's super easy to do on Arch. So you're going to search Yay ML for W. And as you can see, there's two. One is for the Hyperlint Git. One is just for normal Hyperlint. I uh, use this one right here. Number one. Hit enter, hit enter. And it's going to download everything required. Enter password. Hit yes. This is all the stuff that's needed. And setting up multi-monitor is something we can try to go over. Okay. And uh, I'll show you how I did it. Because, <sighs> sorry about this. Every single time, Cache OS always needs this. And it's, it's the most annoying thing in the world to do. I hate it. Like, come on, keep your mirrors updated, will you? So I don't have to constantly uh, reevaluate them. The multi-monitor thing is annoying. Because you have to do some maths and stuff. Okay, and I think it's ML4W hyperlint setup, hitting enter. So this script can be done on Arch, but you'll have to grab it from the GitHub that they use. So we're gonna start, we're gonna select Arch. It's gonna see that most of the stuff we need is already installed. You're gonna wanna hit yes to the dot files. Uh, if you use Paru, use Paru. If you use EA, use EA. I use EA because Paru is weird and I don't like it. Uh, it's going to do a bunch of stuff to configure your entire, you know, setup here automatically for you. You don't need to do anything Hyperland wise besides just run this script. That's what makes it so great. This is why I used it. It's an out of the box experience. It's lightweight. It's optimized. It works. And that's what most people want. So when going through this, you know, it's going to be a lot of things installing. A lot of things that uh, most people are not going to know, like Rolfie Wayland. It's a menu. It's like an app menu. There's Pava there's Control, which is Pulse Audio Control Center. And there's a logout. There's Waypaper. There's just Hypershade. There's a bunch of crazy stuff. And there's some GNOME stuff mixed in here, too, because, you know, making a good solid, uh, what do you call it, Hyperland is kind of difficult. When you don't have a script to automatically do it for you. And the best part is. Do you want to use this folder? Yes, I do. Do you want to create a backup? Yes, you do. Uh, what is this? You already installed the display manager. So you can keep your current display manager. Or you can install SSDM. I'm going to go with just using an SSDM. Sequoia theme sounds nice. Uh, proceed. Keep. Keep. Yes. Okay. So there was an error up there. But it's gone now. So yeah. Changes the colors of your terminal. Let's say the new wallpaper, new terminal colors, welcome settings, all this, and you don't need to reboot. So that's it. And then all we have to do is log out and log in, which is what I'm going to do right now for you to show you that the setup is complete because this is the AMD NVIDIA version of Cache OS that I run because I had to put the NVIDIA card back in the system to do the recordings and the video editing due to a whole bunch of bugs and issues with DaVinci's Resolve that I don't want to have to deal with. All right, welcome to your new install of Hyperlint. This is your welcome screen. If you hold down the Windows key and the left click button on your mouse, you can drag this window anywhere. Uh, if you go to the corner, and I believe it's right click, you can also look at that, resize it. And I don't know. No, the middle mouse button doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so without holding down the Windows key, you can't exactly do the dragging. All right, just letting you know that. Uh, there is a whole bunch of key binds that you can learn from here, and it's easy to access because that's this program right here. It's the sidebar, and then, then you open up the welcome app. Now you can have the welcome app open up every time that you need it to, to, you know, make life easier for you. That's completely fine. Now there's another program that we do need to get. Okay. 
and there's a dock that comes with this in case you want a dock. You can also turn it off. So I don't want to hear no crying about, oh, there's a dock. They're trying to make it Mac OS like. Sit silently and contemplate your dumb words. All right. So let's do this. Uh, I believe it's NGW uh, wall. I think that's what it is. No, that's not it. Okay. Uh, monitor. God damn it. How am I not remembering this? I know it's NGW something or NWG. Is it NWG? Yay. NWG. Uh, monitor? Sorry. Sort of new to this. Weird. One second. I want to figure it out. Okay, so according to this, it's actually uh, NGW display that I type in. And it's right there. It's number one. Okay, enter that. All right, first things first, I need to show you the file structure, okay? I'm going to pin that as well. Uh, pin as you go, your applications, of course. If you want to open up your file menu, it's right there. And then uh, for that, you just hit ESC to get rid of. If we go into our .config, you'll notice there's a hyperfile uh, folder. In here is your monitors and everything else. So configuration, monitors, and there it is. All right. This is currently the one that it uses. Understand? And in here, we're going to open this up. Then we're going to go back to hyper, hyper folder, and then we're going to just type uh, NWG for display settings. And it's going to show you all of our monitors. Now, my HDMI is over on that side. But the problem is that is OK. So I believe this is this is the Dell. All right, this is usually 165. Come on, it's not letting me. You know what, let's just use modes. I believe modes is a little bit easier. So this is the Dell. The Dell actually goes there. Let me place that right there. So the Dell is 165 hertz. This is 180 hertz. And this is 144 hertz which it's not showing where is it right there great now uh for these two they have 10 bit support so we're going to enable that and you can set your scale in here if you need to but we're going to hit apply and keep then we're going to close it out and you'll notice now that there's a monitor config here we're going to open with cosmic we're going to copy this we're going to just paste this and I'm going to hit control S. What that is going to do is, yep, yeah, we have monitors. The easiest way in the world to do this, open up selector. Uh, I got to open up selector again. All right, I got to shut down OBS and open it back up again because it's got to adjust to the new monitor settings. Yeah, OBS doesn't like it when you have to, you know, completely uh, set the monitor configuration. So we had to do a complete reboot to get this to work so I can continue filming again or recording. And we're not filming. We're not on film. We're recording. Now, here we are. It's working. All three of my monitors are functioning as they need to, which is very good. Now, if you click this button, it opens up a sidebar. We're going to take this and place this front and center. In here is where you can set your wallpaper. You could set your, um, what do you call it? Your wallpaper for your login manager as well. And there's a whole bunch of really ugly ones in here. Like, I mean, that's not ugly, but it's just really low resolution. And I'm not a fan of it. So I usually just select the Bing wallpaper here which gives us much better selection. Bing, I know, you're like, Microsoft evil, but they provide really good wallpapers. So Microsoft could be as evil as they want to. 
nothing we do will ever affect that. But it does affect our ability to have great looking goddamn wallpapers. Look at that. Thank you so much. Now, if we open this back up and we once again bring this forward by holding the Windows key and dragging, clicking with the left mouse and dragging, there you go. You can toggle the top bar. You can toggle the dock. You can also toggle game mode off and on. Uh, if we go to set theme for this, you'll notice that there's a bunch of them here. I usually set colored and blur. That way that behind is blurry. I uh, don't really do much else besides this. You can take cheese shots. You can pick colors. I don't know why we're picking colors. But it's kind of cool that we can. There we go. And the app just completely closes after that, which is kind of funny. Uh, there are settings. And let me just make that go bigger. So the settings, again, toggle way bar. You can add more than five workspaces if you need to. Uh, show taskbar module. Oh, yeah, look right there. Taskbar module. That shows you everything that you need up there. Uh, don't need that, though. Uh, system tray module, you can turn things off and on. Like, if you don't want that to show right there, you know, you don't have to. You can change that. Uh, you can change, like, hour, month, whatever, date format, you name it, your appearance. If you need to, Rafi border, size, radius, blur effect, you know? Animations. Like, uh, there's a bunch of animations. There's fast, high, moving. A bunch of stuff. You got decorations. No, no rounding. More blur. Uh, no rounding. Rounding all blur. No shadows. Rounding all blur. More blur and just rounding. Like if I just choose this, then whatever. Right there you go. We just have rounding. But when you focus off of a window, as you can see, there's still some stuff. Now there's a wallpaper effect that you can have. Like blur, negate, negate brightness, bunch of weird things. And, oh, okay, that sounds cool. You can speed up the uh, transitions between wallpapers. So, terminal, uh, PTYXIS, okay, Firefox, uh, actually. Microsoft Edge Stable, because it's what I think I have here. I'm not sure. Is that the stable version? Probably. We're going to leave the rest alone. That looks fine. GNOME Text Editor, yay. GNOME Calculator. Uh, monitor Default Kit Config is fine. Layout Environments. Environments, uh, environmentals, basically, you can add a bunch of stuff like HDR and whatnot. So... There you go. You guys wanted to know how I set up my hyperlint. This is how I did it. I can't go into any more detail than this because I don't really know that much more. Also, if you need to know, your updates are up here for certain things. So if you hit yes, enter your ass word. I said ass word. And it shows you everything that needs to be updated right now. So cursor bin, yada, 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 gear lever, you name it, windsurf. Whole bunch of stuff, fast fetch. Just hit enter. Enter again, enter. You know, it's going to download everything required to update. And then that stupid freaking cursor is going back and forth like that. I hate that so much. And this is it. You're on Hyperland. Hopefully you're enjoying yourself. Uh, if you have the 9070 XD, this is the way to go to get proper stability and to avoid system-wide freezing. And again, super simple, easy to set up, problem-free, takes care of itself. I believe it even has an updater. Uh, which you can just update all the files when they're updated, or you can make it anything you want. You can exchange Waybar for uh, whatever try-hard crap they do these days. You know, it's just, this is not my thing. So asking for a setup guide from a guy that doesn't know how to actually set it up by default is you know, some ballsy stuff right there. I know there's going to be a bunch of, you know, Hyperland fans probably making excuses about how it's not good to use, how this is not good to use and all that. And I'm just, I don't really care. You know, this is functional. This works for me. This makes me happy. By the way, maybe I should tell you one more thing. So if we head into here, 
And I believe if we go into, is it either cache? Is it in here? Is it, is it in the cache? Uh, I believe it's in the ends. No. Okay. It's not in here. And it's probably in config. And trying to find this file is a bit annoying because it's been a while since I've done this. I believe it has to do with the doc that we're using. Display doc hyperlint. If we go in here. Okay. You can change the style and the layout and the design of this. Okay. There's the launch thing right there. But the main problem is I don't know where exactly it does its pinning anymore. Like I wonder if it's moved because yeah, I just don't see it. It's weird. But there used to be a way that you could change the pins around so they suit you better. Like uh uh used to be in here, I think. It did. It used to be in here. Events, there it is. I found it. So basically, it's organized per one. So if I want it to, um, one second, let me just learn to spell Nautilus again. So if I want to, I could add Nautilus. Watch this. So the first one I don't want being OBS Studio. Okay. But after this, I would want Nautilus. Okay, go away, reboot, and we would go and we hit save. And Nautilus is clearly not going to appear, right? Because you'd have to restart the dock. But if I wanted OBS to come down here, actually, I guess we'd probably cut. And it's really, really difficult to be annoyed by this, but I'm trying my best to be annoyed by this. Uh, I would do this, put that there, just type resolve. Uh, what else? Affinity photo would go there, but I don't know how to pull that off. Uh, normally, we just put Steam, Lutris. I don't know how to start Heroic Game Launcher from the terminal, but Heroic? It's just Heroic. Heroic. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I don't really need anything else attached to the dock here. You know, because there's no settings or anything that I could do. We already got OBS. We got Microsoft Edge. I got all the stuff that I need. So I would hit save like that. I'd exit out. We'd go in here. We'd toggle the dock off. We'd toggle the dock on. And look, there's Nautilus. But the main problem is... Nautilus doesn't want to open, so I'd actually have to go here. I'd have to pin Nautilus. We'd have to go through all of this all over again. Not really all this all over again, but you know what I mean. Open here. Ah, so that's what it's called. Okay. And there we go. Save that. Done. And, uh... Oh no, did I just mess it up? Okay, we're gonna unpin it. And hopefully I still remember what I did because I don't know half the time what I'm doing here. As I've said repeatedly, I'll just fix it one more time. Yeah, it doesn't remember. Which is sad. Discard changes. Hey, look at that. It just instantly disappears. And there it is again. So we're going to cut. And paste. And save. Done. That's it. Our dock is now completely organized. Bye, everybody. I hope you this helped. You guys wanted this video. This seemed to be the most asked for thing. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment for this algorithm thing, and I'll see you guys next time.